Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Leadership Void Podcast. I'm Enrique with my co-host, Vince, to bring you the best in our veteran military spouse and first responder community. And Vince will introduce today's guest. Hey, thanks, Enrique. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving and you're closing out this month with one and only Manny Gonzalez. Guess what? He's the development manager at Soldiers Angels right here in the great Orlando area. Manny, thank you for being on the show. Tell us a little bit about you. Well, first off, thank you for you know having me here today with you guys. Uh, it's been something I've been looking forward to for a while now. Um, so a little bit about myself. I'm a medically retired U.S. Marine, was injured uh, during a training exercise back in 1996. So it's been some time now. Ever since then, I've been someone that's really been involved in you know, the vet veterans community, whether it's with advocacy or um, working within the VA system. I served six years as a patient advocate in Chicago. So, you know, being able to help my fellow brothers and sisters with any of the healthcare issues that they had was something that I took great pride in. I've also worked on the VA disability law side here uh, in Orlando for about three years with uh, Hill and Ponton. So being able to work with our fellow vets with uh, developing their cases uh, for service connection uh, was something that I, I really loved. And uh, then I reached a point, I'm like, you know what, I need something more, you know, something different. And that's actually what led me to uh, coming on board here with Soldiers Angels. Um, initially, I started as an area manager here in July of 2002, uh, overseeing the operations uh, for the Orlando and pretty much Central Florida area. And uh, recently, a few months ago, I transitioned to a brand new position uh, as a development manager. So I get to work with uh, potential you know, partners and donors uh, in order to be able to continue providing the, the services that we do. Well, Manny, that's wonderful to hear. And so glad to hear that you're continuing to serve uh, here in the local area through this great venture called Soldiers Angels. And just talking about that, Tell us a little bit about those. Okay, so a little history on the, on the organization. So Soldiers Angels was actually founded 20 years ago, back in 2003. And it was actually founded by the great grandniece of General Patton. Her son was serving in Iraq during the initial stages of the Iraq war. He had requested care packages and he ended up handing those out to his troops and kept asking uh, his mother for more. And at that point, you know, she realized, you know what, this is something that, uh, you know, we could help our, our fellow service members who are deployed with. And she got a team of volunteers together and they just started putting a bunch of care packages to send over to the troops. And that's how Soldiers Angels uh, came about. Uh, initially, it was to work with our service deployed members. And it's over the years has grown to not only include that, but also, you know, working with the families here and also the veterans and the Veterans Health uh, Administration community. So, you know, we've developed a number of programs, uh, not only virtual, but also in person. You know, as I mentioned here in Orlando, we're one of six locations that have field operations in place. We have teams that will go to both Lake Baldwin and Lake Nona, and we'll do inpatient visits. You know, we'll have donors provide different gifts and stuff that we're able to to hand out to the veterans, uh, you know, the different clinics, but also those that are inpatient, because unfortunately not every veteran has family that's nearby, um, so they don't have visitors. So we we take great pride in in our volunteers giving up time to to meet with our men and women who are uh, bedridden here at the VAs and and just giving them you know something to cheer them up and uh, offering an ear to listen to, you know. So here in Orlando, we also have our food distribution. Uh, which is something that I really love uh, being able to attend to. So the food distribution is set up to where every month we are able to guarantee at least a minimum of 75 pounds of food, you know, fresh meats, vegetables, produce to at least 210 uh, veterans or active duty junior service members. Um, and with the way food insecurity is going right now and, and with the inflation, you know, it's getting harder and harder to put food on the table. So that's just one way we're able to give back here. No, absolutely. You know, it started out with those care packages. And I think the word care just carried over in a bigger format, right? Lending yes. an ear, food insecurity, you know, those vets that don't have family. So I commend you and Soldiers Angels for everything you guys are doing out there. So love, you know, this question about, you know, giving back to the community. My, my also, my thought is like, why does Manny want to give back? So love to hear from you about what do you do giving back and or your why? My why is because not every veteran is able to 
voice their need. We veterans sometimes are very stubborn and uh, for lack of better terms, hard headed. You know, it's hard for us to ask for help. And I've always wanted to dedicate my time and efforts to give a voice to those that can't or find it difficult to, you know. So for a number of years, you know, I've guided, you know, my fellow vets to pursue service connection. You know, if I see that they're dealing with an issue and I find out, well, that issue came about from their service. You know, for some, it's a, it's a pride issue and I can understand, but I come from the mindset of, you know what, you dedicated your life to protecting others and, you know, you suffered because of it. And now it's time for us to give back to you uh, in one way or another. So, so that's why I do what I do. Now, I go to great extents to, to give back. However, whether it's, you know, lending, you know, a hand to someone or guiding them or offering advice uh, or just motivating, um, you know, times are challenging sometimes, you know, I face my own issues here and there, but, uh, but yeah, for me, it's, it's just give back and, and try to uh, encourage individuals uh, to move forward. And that's very encouraging to hear and, and so heartwarming that even as you have gone through your challenges, you still manage to turn around and lend that hand forward. And I love that about what you guys are doing. Let's look at the future, right? You talk about 20 years of service out of a, a simple gesture of get, trying to get a care package to a son in the war zone that has turned into a legacy. It's turned into a legacy. So what's on the horizon for Soldiers Angel? Our vision is to continue ensuring that we're able to you know, give back to the active military, um, our wounded military, our veterans, um, you know, and their families. Uh, that's something that is very near and dear to our hearts. And, you know, just to make sure that we can keep providing the necessary resources and, and support, uh, that's our main focus and has been for the past 20 years and for the, you know, forthcoming 20 years, if need be. We continue to partner with different, you know, organizations and corporations as a nonprofit you know, it's the generosity of others that enable us to be able to provide the necessary services. And, um, you know, one thing that I love talking about with us is, you know, Soldiers Angels operates at a 96% efficiency. So for every dollar, 96 cents of it is what's going towards the program. So that's something that's very reassuring to, you know, potential donors. And like I said, that's what it allows us to be able to do a lot of these inpatient visits uh, these different fun activities or um, holiday parties that we'll put on at the VAs, you know, for our vets there, um, our food distributions, you know, to ensure that, you know, not only are we able to meet, you know, those 210 vets that we promise, but, you know, we want to increase that number, um, you know, because the more we can help, you know, the better the situation is, um, you know, in our veterans community. Uh, so, you know, we're looking to continue the different holiday programs. Like right now we're doing our, uh, holiday stockings where we're having a lot of organizations and different families pledging and, you know, creating stockings and having them shipped over to us or the VA. So we can get those handed out to our, our, our veterans and our active service members, our reserve units here, you know, just to show them, Hey, you're not alone. You know, we love you, you know, and thank you for everything that you've done and, and continue to do. No, absolutely, Manny. You know, it's heartfelt what you said, and especially that not all nonprofits are created equal. So 96% efficient rate is huge. And, you know, those partnerships, those definitely those donors are very important to continue this great mission. So folks, we'll, you'll hear at the end how to get a hold of Manny and Soldiers Angels. But let's transition, Manny, talk a little bit about what do you do to continue to develop your skill set and to aid you to thrive in your professional life? So for me, um... Probably the number one thing is just to continue learning. Um, you can never learn too much. Taking in new information helps you, you know, learn and grow and improve. So whether it's through education, uh, working with a mentor, you know, networking, that's another big thing is, you know, connecting with other individuals in similar fields and, you know, collaborating and seeing, you know, what are you doing? You know, what advice can you give me? Um, this is what I'm looking to, you know, to accomplish. 
also for me, communication skills is is very important, you know, to be able to not only communicate verbally, but also written. It's all about active listening and and just being able to adapt your your communication style to the different audiences. Also, you know, teamwork. So while I was the area manager here, you know, working with my volunteer uh, leadership and, you know, coming together and everybody understanding what our mission is and getting input from them on, you know, best practices and, you know, how they think we could accomplish what whatever we were wanting to uh, to attempt. Um, but yes, I mean, it's it's important to continue growing in these different skill sets because things change from time to time and you just have to be able to adapt to every situation. Absolutely. And speaking about advice that can be given, what advice did you receive while you was in the Marine Corps or in your last time dealing with the current corporation that you're working with now that you would like to give to an emerging leader today? So I, I did have a, a staff sergeant in the Marines who uh, the one thing that I remember him instilling me years ago was to always lead by example. Um, and, and that still carries on to this day. Uh, you don't want to tell those that are under you to do something, but then you're not willing to do that yourself. So, and that's something else that, uh, you know, I've always lived with, you know, since high school, actually, when I actually studied General Patton and one of his uh, statements that he made to his troops, you know, that I learned then still resonates with me today. And that's don't tell someone what to do or how to do it. Let them know what you want to accomplish and let them surprise you with their ingenuity. And that's something that I've always taken uh, in the different leadership roles as, you know, I've progressed, uh, you know, from private security management after my service in the Marine Corps uh, to, you know, my time as area manager here in Soldiers Angels. Uh, no, absolutely. Great stuff, Manny. And, and talk about lead by example is a great tenet to, that we all uh, aspire and learn through our military's career. And so important to do that. and you know, give them the task and let them run with it, right? And let yes. them surprise you because, you know, the objective is the finishing, the finish line, but however they accomplish it empowers them to develop them as great leaders as well. So I appreciate all the advice you shared. So love to hear either in your journey through the Marines or and through Soldiers Angels or, or even prior, any memorable leadership aha moments you'd love to share with our audience as well. I would probably say that my big aha moment uh, was when I was in private security management um, back in 2010. Um, I had just taken over as an operations manager at a uh, private security company in, in Houston, Texas. And they were going through a lot of uh, struggles leadership wise. And so I inherited uh, quite a mess. And, you know, I found myself wanting to just jump in, start telling, you know, the different uh, field supervisors and account managers, you know, what to do. And then, um, you know, I, I started getting a little pushback. And so I did a self reevaluation at that point. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not even following my own, my own uh, mantra of, of leading. So, uh, you know, I ended up calling a meeting, you know, with all the different, you know, leaders that reported to me and, and basically starting starting over, um, letting them know what my expectations were, um, that uh, I believed with, you know, their abilities to to lead in their areas and just laid out the foundation of what's expected and, you know, what our goals were and to run with it. And within a month, uh, I saw a huge change in performance, um, employee retention. Uh, one of the things we had a lot of... Uh, you know, new security officers coming in and out. Um, and, you know, I ended up cutting that number in half within the first month with the the help of the the leadership that I had in place. Um, so for me, that was one of those, as you say, aha moments, like, you know what, don't forget, you know, your philosophy, you know, with how you approach these situations, you know. Um, you know, it's natural to forget from time to time, but, but you know, to come to the realization of, you know, don't, don't change what works with you. Um, and, and I haven't since, and, and it's been proven 
uh, very successful in the different positions that I've had since. Definitely some leaders need to reset in order to push forward, right? Farther. And exactly. that's a good, it was a good thing that you okay. caught on to that and were able to capitalize on that moment. So speaking about challenges and you went into a challenge there, what are certain strategies that you use with yourself or your team to overcome those uh, challenges? So, you know, like I had mentioned, communication is paramount um, to the success of any organization. Um, so making sure, you know, if you're in a position of leadership and conveying, you know, your expectations or the company's expectations or the client's expectations, depending on the situation, um, that will help in the success of the operation. Um, also, uh, including your, your, your junior leadership in decision-making, uh, opportunities, you know, when it's appropriate, um, you know, not every time, uh, they'll be able to offer their insight and help make a decision. Uh, sometimes it'll, you know, be the leader's, uh, final word with how something's going to be done, but, but having the leadership involved and in, in offering their opinions and their thoughts, it helps team camaraderie, um, but uh, and, and also, in my opinion, it helps foster a positive team culture. Um, but also, you know, establishing clear goals with what's going on. As as long as everybody understands, you know, what it is that you know you're supposed to be doing, that's what's going to help uh, the teams move forward and, and accomplish their mission and at hand. Um, but also being there in a supportive role, making sure that, you know, as a leader, those that are under you are taken care of, you know, know what the expectations are. If you see someone maybe having an issue, talk to them, be like, Hey, what's going on? Everything fine. You know, and, uh, you know, just have those one-on-ones, you know, offer guidance, you know, and suggestions. Don't tell them how to do something unless they really need that type of assistance. But, uh, but yeah, just going back to the philosophy of, you know, not telling someone how to do something and just having their ingenuity surprise you. But yeah, those are some of the strategies that I've used over the years. Great strategies, Manny. And I love everything you, you said since the inception, right, at the beginning of this conversation. But, you know, it's all about your active listening skills and your communication, as you mentioned, and giving the opportunities for those folks to grow and also fail, because that's how success also happens, to empower them to Exactly. Use. So love hearing all everything you said, Manny. And for those listening in, want to know how to either reach you or Soldiers Angels. How do they go about doing so? To learn more about the organization in general, you want to visit www.soldiersangels.org. And you'll be able to learn about the history of the organization, the different programs that we have going on, and the different ways that you can help give back, uh, either volunteering or um becoming a partner and donor uh, with us. Um, you could reach me directly uh, at my email, which is mgonzalez, with a Z, at soldiersangels.org. Outstanding. Well, folks, we're going to have all that information as part of the show notes and video for you to get a hold of Manny or Soldiers Angels and, and be able to do something with them, uh, if not uh, at least support them. Uh, and if you want to get a hold of the Leadership Void podcast, the Leadership Void at gmail.com is where you'll send that correspondence. If you liked a featured guest or a leadership topic covered, that's how you'll do it. Yes, indeed. And, you know, for those out there, we have great sponsors. We have Triple Nickel, VEI, and Favos sponsoring, sponsoring our show. But today it was all about Manny Gonzalez, Soldiers Angels, everything they're doing all around the country, all around the globe. So, Manny, thank you for being here. And have a great day. Thank you for having me and Semper Fidelis.